Hello and welcome to this Let's Talk Meshing video. Today we're going to talk about new boundary conditions that are available for normal extrusions in Pointwise version 17.3 R3. In this video, I'll do a review of our most popular boundary conditions and then I'll demonstrate our new options. The best way to see how these work is to first start with extrusions from a connector. So, let's get started. Here we have Pointwise and on the screen you can see a connector. It has a dimension of 10. Let's select that connector and turn the points on to make things a little bit easier to see. What I would like to do is take this connector and use a normal extrusion to grow it into a domain. Make sure the connector is still selected. Go, go to the menu Create, Extrude, and we're looking for the top one, which is Normal. And this opens up a fourth tab on the panel. And under that tab is the feature for normal extrusions. There should be three tabs, Run, Attributes, and Boundary Conditions. We're going to focus on boundary conditions today. The connector has essentially two ends. It has a left end and a right end. And we are going to assign boundary conditions to both of those that will control how the domain grows. There's one thing that we have to look at. Notice there are no arrows um, telling us what direction it's going to grow. You should see arrows. Uh, that's because the arrows are pointing into the screen, like that. We need to change that. I want this to grow vertically. Okay, so click on the Attributes tab. There's several frames. We are concerned with the one that says Orientation. Check that box. If you push the Set Plane button, uh, it will take the plane that you're looking in and set that as the plane in which the domain is going to grow from the connector. And this is exactly how we want it. If I wanted it to grow in a downward direction, I'd push flip, but I don't. I want it to grow upward, so I push flip again. So back to the Boundary Conditions tab. I'm going to select both ends of the connector. And the drop-down box is now active. Prior to selection, it was not active. So let's click on the drop-down box. There's a few options here. There are essentially three. Uh, there's the default, which is Splay. And there's the Constant Options. And then we have the symmetry options, and we'll go over what the difference is between those two in a second. Uh, first, let's, let's select the splay, which is the default. Now, the splay boundary condition has a splay factor that you have to set, and that splay factor goes between 0 and 1. If you set it to a number that is close to 0, and then push the set boundary condition, of course, it should grow almost vertically, uh, almost like a translation, but with a little bit of uh, splay to the left or right. And by splay, I mean mushrooming as it grows. So let's go over to the Run tab. Let's change that to 20. Push Run. And you can see that the domain um, that we have here, it's splayed out a little bit, but it's not too noticeable. But what, let's uh, change that. Go back to the Boundary Conditions tab. Select both. Let's change the display value to not, uh, 0 0.9, which is closer to the other end, 1. Push Set Boundary Condition. Click on the Run tab. Push Run. And you'll see that it really mushroomed out that time. And that's the difference between the display factors that are close to 0 and close to 1. But let's restart that. Let's go back to the Boundary Conditions tab. Let's talk about the constant versus symmetric boundary condition. I'm going to select the left end of the connector, go to uh, drop down box. Right now it's set on splay, but I'm going to choose constant X now. Set boundary condition. Uh, this time I really want to exaggerate what we see, so I'm going to grow this to 35 steps. Push run. Wow, look at that. So what just happened? Well, as you can see, the, the right end of the connector was still set to splay, and it really did splay. It mushroomed out. Uh, and the left end of the connector just grew straight up. It held a constant X value. It did not waver to the left or to the right as it grew vertically. And that's the, that's the purpose of the constant X boundary condition when you apply it to a connector. But what about the symmetry? Let's select that uh, left end of the connector and choose some, uh, Symmetry X, Set Boundary Condition, go back to Run, push the Run button, and see what the difference is. Now, the difference is very subtle. And it has to do with uh, how the, uh, the horizontal lines here are growing away 
from that left edge. Now notice that the left edge also grew straight up. It held a constant x value. Uh, the difference here is that the the line, the curves coming out from it, um, it made a much better attempt to come out uh, close to normal. Um, it's not perfect, but it came out much better close to normal. The value of the symmetry boundary condition uh, is if you wanted these, uh, if you wanted to mirror this domain about that left edge, uh, you would have a much more continuous uh, curve as it crossed over. Uh, so that's the value of the symmetry versus constant. So that's pretty much a review of the boundary conditions available for connectors. Uh, let's go into another dimension and we'll talk about taking 2D domains and extruding them into blocks. Okay, so we've moved on from connectors and now we're talking about domains. We're going to extrude domains into blocks and I'd like to show you a few ways that you can control that using the boundary conditions. Here we have a two-dimensional uh, structured domain. It's drawn in the X Y plane, and I will be extruding it into the Z plane. As with all extrusions, you first have to start by selecting what you would like to extrude, in this case, a domain. So select the domain, go up to the Create menu, Extrude, and we're talking about normal extrusions today. Uh, note that it uh, it selected the direction, and that's actually the direction I want it to go. If that wasn't the case, I could fix that using the attributes command uh, with the orient orientation. Uh, so just like with the connectors, uh, a fourth tab opens up on the panel called Normal, and we have Run, Attributes, and Boundary Conditions. Uh, the difference now, of course, is that you have a lot more boundary conditions to work with. And again, uh, note that the drop-down box is not enabled. I can't select anything. And that's because I don't have any boundary conditions, or I don't have any edges selected. So let's select all the edges. Uh, and when you push on the drop-down box, you're going to see a lot that look familiar, right? We have the splay, which we demonstrated with the connectors. We have constants. Um, we have uh, symmetries. Uh, the ones that we didn't have that you can see here are we have adjacent grid, database constrained, and we have this floating X down here. Now you may wonder, what happened to the floating Y and floating Z? Uh, that just means that I have to scroll down. I grab the scroll bar over here. Now the floating X, floating Y, and floating Z, uh, those are the new boundary conditions that I'd like to demonstrate. But let's talk about some of the two earlier ones. Let's do a quick review. First, let's do adjacent grid. Now, I can't really do adjacent grid because I don't have a grid here. So let's go ahead and make a, a, an adjacent grid. Uh, fortunately, I did this ahead of time. And let's turn on the adjacent grid. Here we go. That's an adjacent grid that I turned on, uh, that I created uh, earlier. But let's go back to this bottom domain that I'm interested in. Create, extrude, normal. Uh, the direction is correct. Go over to boundary conditions. I'm going to select this edge. Oh, I should mention that basically. Uh, these have a default of splay 0.1 on them. But I've selected this this uh, edge right here that is shared with uh, this vertical grid. I'm going to select adjacent grid. I have to push begin and it allows me to pick the one I'm interested in. I, obviously there's only one here so I'm going to select that one. Push end and set boundary condition. Go over to run. Let's grow uh, 15 steps and see what happens. Now, what did it do here? Well, as you can see, the other sides, they had that uh, a little bit of splay as they were growing. Uh, but this, this uh, edge over here, as it grew, it actually tried to follow, it actually tried to follow the spacing that was predefined on this adjacent grid. Uh, that's the value of the adjacent grid boundary condition. Um, if you happen to have, uh, let's say you happen to have a big block over here and you didn't want to change anything on it, but you did want to extrude this and have everything match up, that's why you would use adjacent grid. So let's restart that. The next option in the list after adjacent grid is database constrained. Now, of course, in order to do that, I have to have a database and that's okay. So I'll go back to my layers. Uh, I've created these ahead of time just to make it uh, quicker for you to watch. Turn off the adjacent grid. Let's turn on a wavy database. I thought let's make this let's make this fun. Okay. 
So make sure you select your domain first and then go into Create, Extrude, Normal. Let's go over to the Boundary Conditions tab. I have to select that edge. Now what I would like that to do, if I could, is to grow along the database, to follow that database. So I select from the Boundary Conditions, I select Database Constrained. Uh, now it gives me the option to choose a database. Now I only have one here. I select the Wavy Database, push End, and set boundary condition, never forget to do that. And I'm going to run this one for seven steps. Let's see if we can get it to follow that, that curvature. Okay. Let's go a little more than that. Let's go 15 steps. Let's see if it followed it. And it did. Now that's, that's pretty cool. If you look at that, the edge of this domain, as it grew, it followed that database and it stayed on that database. That can be very handy, if, uh, depending on what your model is and what you're trying to do. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and just turn off that database. Let's go back to our plain old domain. I've selected my domain. I go into Create, Extrude, Normal. Uh, we have the Run Attributes, Boundary Conditions. Let's select an edge and go into the Boundary Conditions drop-down. So we've talked about the adjacent grid, database constrained. Uh, you've already seen the constant um, uh, XYZ, the symmetry XYZ, and the splay. Uh, let's do a demonstration of splay with a lot of splay, 0.9. Uh, don't forget to push set boundary condition. Uh, oh, actually, let's uh, let's select all these. Display 0 0.9, set boundary condition, push run, and we'll run this for let's see 20. As you can see, it really mushroomed out as it grew. That's a lot of splay. If you didn't want that, you could set the display factor way down, 0 0.05. Let's go back to boundary condition. And now we get to talk about the three new boundary conditions, float X, float Y, and float Z. So click on boundary conditions tab. I'm going to choose float Z. And what float Z does, it's going to hold uh, X and Y constant as it grows. Click on run. We'll run it for 20 steps. Okay, so let's take a look at what just happened here. So the rest of the domain it tried to balloon out as it grew, right? It mushroomed out just like the splay tells it to. But when you help, uh, put in a float value, it uh, allowed it to grow straight up. And let's, uh, let's color this in so we can get a much better view. I'm going to change this to shaded. All right, so there you can see that that entire edge essentially floated straight up, right? It did not uh, it did not balloon out like all the other ends, and it stayed very flat. And that's the value of the float boundary condition. So that was a review of the basic uh, extrusion boundary conditions available for domains. Um, up next, I'd like to talk with you about the extrusion from uh, wingtips, especially those that have a pole in them. Uh, we have uh, some new abilities there with uh, PointWise, and I'm going to demonstrate that. The last extrusion that I'd like to talk about is a very special one. This one involves the extrusion of a domain that is wrapped around a wingtip and it contains poles. Uh, here you see it on the screen. Let's take a closer look at this. So when I turn on the domain mask, you can see that this is all one domain. Now, how is this working? Well, it starts up here on the upper surface and it comes to the edge, the wingtip, and it wraps around and comes underneath. There is a pole here at the nose and a pole at the tail. <clears throat> in the past, this would be very difficult to extrude, but now, in point wise, version 17.3 R3, let's take a look at how this works. And it's just like any other extrusion. I select the domain. I go to Create, Extrude, Normal. 
Uh, it's hard to see here, but the default direction is inward, and I don't want that. I want it to extrude outward, so I select Attributes, Orientation Flip, and that looks correct. I'm just going to leave the, uh, the boundary conditions right now to the defaults. These are, th these are now the edges. I'm going to go to Run. I'm going to run this for, let's say, eight steps. Now, as you can see, it extruded just fine. Uh, in the past, this would be very difficult to do, but now, uh, PointWise can handle this very well. This type of topology will be very helpful if you're using overset grids. And that's the last of the demonstrated extrusions today. Thank you for watching this edition of Let's Talk Meshing.